What up, everyone? Oh, okay, Danny. Welcome to another episode of The Roundtable. Uh, Corey G is out today, so we are filling in, and we got a special guest, Jake Emery, the CEO up, of Lang Pipe, correct? <laughs> the pipe Master. <laughs> yeah, the Pipe Master. Pipe, pipe Lang. Yeah, but... No, it's in the <laughs> background. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Okay, but yeah, today, you know, we got Jake on. We're cutting it up. Uh, <laughs> basically, we're going to be asking him some business questions, some life questions, dad questions, all of it. Um... So, so we got Tyler C. Lever on too. Tyler, how about you? Um, you know, start it off. What question you got for Jake? How'd you get so big? Just worked out, ate a lot. That's about it. Simple science. Yeah, that's it. Let's Simple talk science. about that for a second. Okay, can you define what not be or being not small is for the audience here? What is be, not being small to you? So, not small is more about a mindset than it is anything else. It's facts. So it's mental, right? Yeah. Even if you're small, if you think you're fucking yoked, you're yoked. Yeah. All right? It's facts. Yeah. yeah. It's confidence. That's what it is. There you go. Yeah. yeah. At, at, w- at, w- at what age did you develop in your thinking that, wow, I am not small? At what age were you not small? I was probably six. I was say six pretty, yeah. Yeah. pretty early. <laughs> were you, just, <laughs> were you just, <laughs> just dogging on everyone oh, like yeah. in the school oh, playground, yeah. basically? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was always a big boy. So, yeah. yeah. Probably six. Interesting. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like, kids didn't want to play with you because you would, like, hurt them, right? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So obviously, you know, having the not small confidence, you know, breeds into everything, every aspect of life. That's it. Gym, That's relationships, it. whatever. But I kind of want to go into the business aspect. I guess having confidence in business, and you know, you taking over the CEO, CEO role at your company. Like, let's let's talk about that a little bit. Go back and listen to the first episode with Jake, by the way. Yeah, of course. For sure. Yeah, yeah, some details of that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, really, it's all. What's, what's your end goal? Where do you want to be at in your life? And for me, I told myself at 22, 23, I'm going to own this company by the time I'm 30. Nobody believed me but me. And then I just went to work, made it happen. And it didn't matter who said I couldn't do it, I knew I could. And, and then I did. Why do you think you're so certain about that? Like, what? Just you fucking just, you knew. just absolutely I knew it, knew it yeah. intuitively. Yeah. I knew I was going to. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. There's no re- rhyme or reason why I should have been able to because. Even to this day, the every, the way everything happened, I should not have been able to. I was broke. I had nothing, right? But yeah. just was there like a rough, Was there like a rough outline or plan or some like concrete steps that you had in your mind, or was it just kind of flying by the seat of your pants? See the pants. Yeah. Just fucking figure it out. I think that's important. Yeah. yeah. To don't don't follow the rules. Sometimes you just there are no rules in business. Right. right. right? Yeah. Go to business school. Okay. Yeah. But and that's what? not going to teach you how to run a business. Go go work for a business. You know, or start yeah. a business. However you want to do it. Yeah, I think that that like is a true testament to what we do here at Max Effort. Think about how yep. quickly things change and how things move and everything. We're sure. pivoting this way and that way all the time, yeah. so it's hard to even have a plan. There's no like traditional business anymore. I mean, you, you look at school. You go to school to learn, right? Education. A lot of school is memorization. Well, I can get on my phone in ten seconds. I can tell you anything. I can learn in school. Mm-hmm. So I don't need to know everything that you were taught in school, right? Yeah, I need to know about taxes, finances. That them things are more important than you know the seventh president of the United States. Yeah, it's just sure. a regurgitation yeah. of information. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think the biggest thing is here is like we we run into problems all the time. There's always an, some new issue or some new thing that we have to work on. And I think the biggest thing is we all are very quick at finding the solution. And that's pretty much the mindset you have to have is solution based. You have to have that mindset. Yeah. So I am in the solution industry. I'm not in the problem industry. Do not bring me a problem if you don't have a solution. I don't care if it's right or wrong. It, it might be a bad one. I might say that, that was horrible. Let, let's think about this. But do not bring me problems. I, w- I want solutions you know, to come with it. Yeah. It's. Pro- I look at problems like opportunities. So something comes up. The the plastic bottles can't get plastic. That yep. was a problem that became an opportunity that actually changed the business for Max. Right. Yep. It ended up being a good thing. So when something happens in your in your business or in your training, whatever it is, figure out what the solution is to, to make something bad become good. So yeah. I'm all about glass half full all the time. So yeah, do you, do you have like a lot of your workers come up to you with problems and solutions? Is that like in more their problems. mindset? More Even management, it, it's majority problems. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's, how do you foster that kind of mi- mindset? Is it kind of like a teaching moment where you're sitting down whiteboarding, you know, with people, or how, how do you go about? Depending on the complexity of it, normally I I can tell them right away what what to do. You gotcha. Know, okay. Come with a problem. I already know the solution because I've been there and done it. Or yeah. You know, just, yeah. it's it's simple for me but do like your i guess higher level guys do like they 
basically come to you for like the final seal of approval or do you like instill in them that you trust them with whatever their instinct so is? So it depends on the level of it. Um, you know, it'll be Mary Cody. They'll come to us on depending on the avenue. Some, some things, you know, call and get, you know, approval for. Some things we give them the, the go ahead. Depends on the high level, you know, how, how big it is. But like on the day to day operations, I have very little in that outside of a conversation in the afternoon every other day a review but i'm in all the scheduling all the meetings um, and the emails but I'm, I'm not in the actual like call so we have a guy that does all of our operational stuff and i i don't do anything with it so yeah you're not really handling that it kind of reminds me of like the going back to like the four-hour work week when he like he basically became his own bottleneck and then and until he empowered his customer service team with like hey, you have the ability to do these five things without the approval. <laughs> and then it kind of like opened the floodgates, you know, for expansion and growth and right. stuff like that. So, and, and one thing we're going through right now is structure. It, it's, I mean, you guys see it with Max, it's a non-traditional business, but with ours, you know, 85 employees all over Ohio, you know, different regions, different territories, you know, guys coming from three or four different states that work for us. We have to have structure and we have to have processes. So, a lot of what we do is structure based and I'm not a structure person, but I, you know, visionary or whatever you want to call it, I can come up with an idea, but I'm not, I'm not going to see it through. So everything we do, we're developing checklists. So you el limit, eliminating human error for what we do is huge because we're in a dangerous industry, you know, mm -hmm. putting pipe in the ground, natural gas, like it can be, it can get ugly. So we want to make sure that everyone has a checklist of what they need to do and they follow it. it, it it's, we're, training in the right way um, we're in the process of looking at some different operating systems stuff so we can develop extraordinary systems and not have to have extraordinary people you know where we can bring in people that don't have to be the best at that position because the system will allow them the growth yeah, yeah. opportunity yeah for sure because whenever you took over there w there were no systems correct zero there was nothing nothing so can you talk about that like how tough was that process like <coughs> mentally trying to even start to get the first system in place. Or where do you even begin? Yeah, like where, <laughs> right? It was, it was, so, you know, the vice president was gone within six months and the controller was gone within six months of buying the company. So the two people that really knew how to run that business were gone. So it was pretty much four of us running the whole entire operation um, three, four months. And what we did is <laughs> we started outsourcing. We got smart people in the room, you know, brought in a CFO, hired an accounting manager and then just start picking the, the battles, the, the most important. Um, we want to make sure that we're getting paid, we're paying our vendors and our, our guys are getting paid. If them three things are covered, the rest of it, we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. But them three things have to be have to be done. You don't want to not, you know, you got, trust me, if them guys don't have a paycheck at five o'clock in the morning on Friday, they're going to call you, say, where the fuck's my money at? <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> like clockwork. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. Yeah. 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 And, and a lot of guys live paycheck to paycheck. Sure. They're, you know, they're looking at it, making sure it's there. Yeah, I mean, it is interesting, like, kind of, like, viewing it as, like, finding, like, where the starting point is. And then, like, from there, then, like, you start to gain a little bit of momentum. Mm -hmm. Like, you're, like, figuring out how to, you know, how to run the business, even if, though you might not know where to even begin in the first yeah. place. And, and normally you're not going to know, but there's going to be things that come up that you have to figure out what to do next. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a glaring, it's a glaring weakness right here. We have no accounting department. We have to get this fixed. Mm -hmm. So we hire people, bring them in, and then it's, you know, management, operations, safety, you know, the different departments. There's something that comes up where, oh, shit, we need somebody there. And it's been that way. And we're, we're to the point now where we have our team around us. So now we're developing the system for the team and, and the process. So that's the kind of the next stage. So let's talk about the team building process. What are, I guess, what are some of the characteristics characteristics and values and abilities that you look for in your, like, employees? So, we're, we have a very good safety culture. We actually won an award for, um, you know, a, a safety award. It, it was massive. It was throughout the United States, thousands of different companies. We were number one. Um, so, safety is the number one value. Quality is the second one. Our quality of work, you know, what we go do, the final product, this, it, our, our name's on the side of the truck. We want to make sure our quality is always there. Um, and then, you know, teamwork, integrity, them are different things. We want our guys to represent the company very well. No different than I would, you know, walking down the street, talking to a homeowner. 
our guys, we want them to buy into what we're doing. And they have, you know, yeah. that we've created the culture and allowed them the opportunity to voice their opinion. So we have like safety teams. They'll come in once a month, they'll sit down. Um, and it'll be anybody. So it could be a guy that just started, a guy that's been there 10 years. And they'll sit down and go through different issues they see, discuss it, and then have an action plan moving forward of what to do next. So letting everyone's voice be heard um, is huge. Let it, let everyone have their opinion, have their input. Uh, it helps a ton. I think it's great right. that you keep that in place. Mm -hmm. Have yeah. to. Yeah, yeah, it's huge for the culture. Because it's not about me. It's not about the management. It's about the guys out on the field. So what are we doing to help them be more successful? Because you know, we have to help them. <laughs> Well, and if that happens, I mean, it's kind of like a – it's a revolving door. Everything keeps moving then because then if you have those systems and it, it helps your people and you serve your people, well, then they serve the company at large, which serves everybody, right? Mm -hmm. So it's maybe just like a cycle and make sure those things are in place. And if so, the machine will take care of everything, right, yeah. if it's so set up right. We have, and me and Cody have a non-traditional thought process. So we, we tell people, technically you work for us, but – we're here to help you. So what can we do to support you to make you better at your job? So, and, and we tell people that all the time, how can I help you out? And people that have worked for corporate companies or been to other places are like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, right. I'm supposed to be doing this for you. And I'm like, no, no. we want to help you out yeah. because we want you to excel. So we don't have to do that position. You know, we don't want to be the operations manager. We, we have bigger aspirations than, than being that management. So we want to support them the best we can. Interesting. Yeah. So I guess on the flip side, what what's what's some of the things that you see that you're like, oh nope, that's a big like no no, you're out. Like and what? Give me more like. Like I guess like what are like what do you, you have know, zero tolerance? Yeah, for? zero tolerance. You mean like for, what's like a red flag? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like what are the red flags? Because I'm I'm assuming with some of your guys, you, like the turnover. You know, aside from safety. Like they yeah, aside, like, so yeah. like a warning yeah. and then like Anytime. a side <laughs> So you know, a lot of people. Um, want to tell me how great they are and not go do it, right? Don't don't come in and tell me you're the best. Go show me you're the best, you know. Don't tell me how great you are, what you can do. Um, oh, I've been doing this for 30 years. Well, I don't, I don't care what you did for 30 years because you weren't here doing it. So, you know, do you operate the way we do? Normally, people will show their ass pretty quick. So, um, you know, sometimes it's better just to keep your mouth quiet and people think you're an idiot than to open it and confirm you are, you know. Yeah. So, people that come in with that chip on their shoulder want to prove a point got to be the loudest yeah. guy you know it doesn't work in our industry it, it'll yeah, get yeah. exposed real quick i mean that carry it sounds like it probably carries over into the gym and other parts of your life too right yeah i mean you see me. some yeah you see some little dude walk in he's telling you he can bench press 600 pounds you're like all right right <laughs> yeah. like you know yeah. better right away yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 and it, it's it's the same you can normally spot it pretty quick yeah, yeah. for sure bullshit yeah yeah, so you mentioned that turnover, and obviously that'll that'll expose itself because if, if, you know, it's only a matter of time before somebody weeds themselves out, especially in an operation as sophisticated as yours, you require the diligence with safety and everything. So <clears throat> aside from the team as a whole and whatever group or team they're working with, say it's out in the field, um, aside from them operating and managing the, the – the safety of it all and, and the teamwork of everything that that'll show itself and that'll that'll showcase and, and let so if someone's paying attention long story short they can watch and after long enough they'll be like okay I see from their actions that I should work this way yeah. uh, so let's say someone's there or it's a handful of people and uh, for them it's a culture problem so they you think that they've been there for long enough to where they they haven't been uh, weeded out yet so they're still there so they haven't turned themselves over mm -hmm. but they're just not catching on and they're not or, or even if it's consciously they're not working in like the rest of the team is showcasing and they should be how do you can convey that culture and and uphold that standard of operation so we do like um we do employee evaluation so like our foremans will do you know they got a crew of four guys they'll do an evaluation on everyone on that crew um we do 15, 30, and I think 45 or 90 day, you know, from new hire. Yep. So we do evaluations on everyone and go through, and then then we sit down with them, say, here's where you're good, here's where you're bad, here's what you need to do to improve. You know, if it's all bad, you know, here's what you need to do to improve or, or we're going to have to let you go. And transparency is key, you know. Yeah. Being honest with someone, like, hey, you know, you show up late too much, you show up late again, you're out of here. Uh, uh, that's it. We're not going to motherfuck you. We're not going to cuss you out. We're going to just tell you this is what we expect, and if you can't do it, then someone else will. And that's sure. it. Yeah. So the employee evaluations, um, we just implemented that last year, and and that was a that was a big um, big thing for us to to see where everyone's at, and then every tier of management gets an evaluation done on them. 
you know, different timelines, but, you know, me and Cody might do one on our operations guy. Um, he might do one on, you know, a different manager that's working under him, like an area supervisor. And then project managers will do foremans and just down, on down the line. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that really lets us know what the temperature of the room is um, for the guys, especially new new hires. Sure. Because you never know who, who you're getting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, I guess one more question for me real quick so, to piggyback on that. So um, you mentioned the – the evaluation and feedback for at the management level that might be a little bit different do you approach that differently and, and do you have to approach that differently than maybe uh, your 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 uh, field guys yeah definitely so you know the management has a lot a lot more insight on the big picture so they know where we're going what we're doing but we have to hold them to a higher standard also so the the questioning and and the way we approach that is a lot different it's yep. um, more complex and it's more in depth about the future of the business and where we're heading and then handling situations you know different things that come up we'll address them immediately so you know if a guy fires someone and there's you know confrontation whatever it might be we'll address it then and take care of it so we won't let it ride and, until it's time for that evaluation we'll we'll handle it on the spot got it so you know management is, is a, a lot different animal understood for sure yeah. yeah interesting trey what are you thinking over there um, well, so I remember, like, last time that we had Jake on the podcast, he talked about that, uh, like, one of, like, his big things on just how he had so much knowledge in the business in the first place is that, like, he grew up in that business. He was working there. He basically, like, worked all the different, like, positions and everything like that. So, like, I was kind of curious, like, once then you got to, like, that management role and you kind of, like, had the opportunity to, like, assess the business, what, what was, like, what were, like, some things that you, like, were, like, damn, like, when I was working there in that position – that really sucked and I want that to change so I want to go back and be able to like change that for them great question so being surrounded by incompetence for as long as I was allowed me to advance very quick because there wasn't a lot of people that had my mindset and a lot of people thought I was lazy because I wasn't working the hardest I was, but I was out working everyone from an intelligence standpoint mm -hmm. so I might not be the guy that's down in the ditch working my ass off physically but mentally I'm, I'm 100 steps ahead of everybody and as that went on we we fixed so many things that were wrong so it allowed us to develop you know moving forward um, the ability and the skill to, to eliminate incompetence I learned more about the business in general from watching it done the wrong way than I did watching it being done the right way. Yeah. So what we've done is fix the things that we knew were, were wrong and we created systems or we're creating systems to, to make it almost idiot proof. Like you don't have to be that smart in the industry to do it. So we want it to be more training and education throughout what we have to do and not rely on the ability to catch on in the skill. And, you know, I grew up, you know, kind of redneck, little school you know race motocross like always you know on equipment whatever so i understood this from a young young age that's going away you know between yeah. just social media just the the nature of the beast you know right now we don't have a lot of farm boys coming and working for us you know not a lot of yeah. guys that grew up doing this a lot of them do it because it's an opportunity to make money now where before it was everyone did, that that was it you know construction was huge because no one could afford to go to college or didn't want to go and it's going the other way now. Everyone wants to go to school, but don't have a direction out of school. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I would say for most of us, most of us, like me, Tyler, and Trey, we started out as basically free interns. And I think us basically learning the ins and outs of just product fulfillment here at Max helped us then, now we're in these higher positions, understand more of what the business requires, what it needs, and the opportunities to basically build the systems mm -hmm. to make things better. Right. Mm -hmm. So always always prevent you know bring value so like you guys brought value with no expectation of return mm -hmm. and your value showcase itself and then provide an opportunity so anytime you know i seek out someone whether i want advice or you know just to network with them i'm going to them to give them something and i'm not asking anything in return and normally you'll get respect r right away but if you come to me and say hey i want to start this business you know, can we do lunch? I'm not just going to sit down and say, yeah, let's do lunch. You know, mm -hmm. tell me about your business. I'm going to say, hey, send me an outline of what you want to do. You know, go through all the steps. And then if I know you're about it, I'll sit down with you. Hell yeah. I want to see everybody do good. Yeah. You know, and, and it separates people. Um, 
when you go to them offering something for nothing, no expectation of return. Thousand percent. Because I think, yeah, most of us, we would just come in here for hours, literally pack sacks. For the first few months I was here, I didn't ask a single fucking question. Because just like you said, I'm not, I'm the type of person who, if I have, I'm not going to just say something to say something. Right. I'll just, you know, mind my own business and listen and, t- and acknowledge and stuff like that. Fly in the wall. Yeah, 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 fly in the wall and just like listen and observing, but also putting in hard work, you know. Well, and you're also developing a skill. So when you pr- when you came here, you probably didn't know what direction you're gonna head. No. Right. You didn't know that you're gonna be the graphic gangster. Fuck like no. you didn't know that, <laughs> right? You're just here doing your test yeah. boosters, right? You always yeah. talk about that. But you provided value, and then you figured out your your lane. You figured out a niche, and, then, and then you you made the opportunity happen. Yeah. yeah. So what advice would you give to someone who's potentially in their first uh, job in their career? How can they basically separate themselves and get that, you know, advancement? Because probably a lot of the, our listeners are not in an environment like this where it's easily that attainable. You can just say it, but more like prove it. So figure out, first of all, you know, do you fit that culture of that whatever industry you're in? Do you fit the culture? And what do you want to do for the rest of your life? You know, for me... Do I want to be, you know, put pipe in the ground myself all the time? No, that's not my end goal. My end goal is freedom. Freedom of time and freedom of money I talk about all the time. Um, I want to provide financially enough to do whatever the hell I want. So what is your end goal? And if you figure out what you want to do in your life, then assess your current situation. So are you in a, an atmosphere that you enjoy being in? Are you miserable going to work every day? If you wake up miserable every day going to work, it's probably not for you. And so many people get stuck being comfortable because I got a paycheck. You know, I'm good with what's going on in my life because I got money coming in. But that's temporary. Or you're going to be miserable the rest of your life. So figuring out what your niche is, figuring out what makes you happy, that's the most important thing. And then after that, trans- translate that into what you want to do career-wise. You know, not a lot of people don't don't know. And I didn't know, but I knew that when I was young, I was like, I'm going to go work, make money, and then a couple years of doing that, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to buy this fucker. So to go right off this real quick, I know G kind of t- has talked about this in the past too, is like, what is the, what is your version of a perfect day look like? I can so, wake up when I want, I can do what I want that day, and I can do it on my time. Because now it's different, you know. Well, so what are you doing? I want to know what Jake Ember is doing on, on a daily. Perfect day. Well, I mean, right now I'm smoking a cigar, talking on podcast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guess what? I, I can do it, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I'm kind of a psychopath. I wake up at three. I want to train, you know, for a few hours. Go home. Normally, an audio book, emails for an hour. Um, go to the office, and then just I'm starting to lay my day, at, my my weeks out where. Every day, I pretty much know what I need to do, mm-hmm. and then I know what can carry over. You know, yeah. There's action items that have to be taken care. Of. Like today, this has to be done. Um, most of the time, they'll have it dialed in. Where okay, I got to get all this done. Well, that's going to take me two hours. What else can I do this day? Or, you know, it's a nice sunny day out. I want to go home and hang out with my my daughters. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do that. So you're fucking dialed now. Get, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a lot better now. It used to be you know, 15 hours a day just to survive, you know, building the business, <coughs> the process is getting the people in place. Now it's starting to get to the other point where we're going to, you know, excel the process and, and start thriving in the business. Mm-hmm. This is the first year that we've actually, the priority is production, making money. Before that, it was survival <laughs> yeah. until this year. Yeah. Yeah. You know, May will be three years in business, and this is the first time that we focus on making money. Because that, that was going to be, like, my next question, too, is, like, it's it's midway through April right now. Like, what are you most excited about maybe this year and ne- yeah. or next year? So we just implemented a job costing software that will help us a ton go to the next level. So kind of like what you guys were doing at Max, we'll know every day exactly where we're at on a project. Every project we have, it'll have a percentage of completion. It'll say financially where it's at. Um, and we just implemented it a couple weeks ago. Talk, yeah. So we're in the very beginning stages of it. That's so that, that's where we're at right now. And I'm, I'm pumped. So it's going to allow me a lot of flexibility. It's going to eliminate a lot of human error, mm-hmm. um, a lot of spreadsheets, you know, pull, pulling a spreadsheet after I asked for it and then you know, numbers not being put in right or just it not being done correctly. Sure, this yeah. will auto populate everything for us. So I'm pumped. That's I'm huge. Excited. Yeah. yeah, I've been I've been working on it, trying to get something like that for a few years, and yeah. we haven't had it. Well, congrats. Yeah. yeah. We, is it time for a break? All right, time for a break. I think we're gonna get uh, the director of sports performance, Tyler Trevi, on again, and maybe uh, should we do another segment of the Danny Ask Question? 
Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. See you after the break. Break time. <laughs> And now with us is Max River Muscle Athletic Director and Director of Sports Performance, Tyler Treadway with the NSF Amino Recovery. Take it away, Treadway. Mr. Small Arms. Ooh, hello. Can you read this this <laughs> blue and orange sticker for me? Ooh, I think what it says that? it says NSF what Certified Sport. Boom! NSF Certified for Sport, the same amino recovery you're already taking. Just now we put this label on it to make it certified for sport. So what they do is they test every ingredient on this label to make sure that the uh, values match up. So if we say that there's 5,000 milligrams of glutamine, there's actually 5,000 milligrams of glutamine in here. We're not lying to you. Everything that we say is in here is actually in here. On top of that, they test it against 400 ingredients to make sure that you won't fail a drug test. Coaches, athletes, you can take our product knowing that it is safe and it will help you get the results on and off the field. Hit me up, Treadway21 at MaxEffortMuscle.com, Treadway21 on social media so I can help you get better for your sport. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Treadway. Back to the show. Okay, we are back. Thank you, Mr. Treadway, for that amazing NSF uh, ad read. Um, it was definitely scripted. Uh, but now I think it's uh, the people were asking, you know, small arms. They love the small arms. Ask a question. So we're going to bring it back. So, Danny, take it away. Yeah, we're, we're actually going to call this Small Arms Says. So okay. um, this is my segment <laughs> now. So just a, just a heads up. <laughs> small Arms Says, okay. Yeah, sponsored by Not Being Small. Yeah, Arms um, Army, shout out. Yeah, Arms Army. Follow follow us wow. on social. Yeah. Maybe you'll get uh, you know featured. Yeah. Tag in us in your armpits. Yeah, dude. tag us Friday. Armpit. Damn. Yeah. Um, I finally know I was going to go with that. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, it is uh, it's Flex Friday today, obviously. I mean, Jake's choking the bicep already. So, so yep. um, <laughs> we're all, we're going to, like, go ahead and collectively um, go one by one and see um, what is your go-to bicep <laughs> superset. If you've got Ooh. 100 reps only, what are you doing for those 100 reps? Jeez. All right, Tyler, take it away. Dude, I think maybe it's amateur. I'm sure Jake will tell me if so. Uh, probably just cable curls because this you want to do inside, outside, in the middle. Do you want it lowest angle? Do you want to bump it up? Like yeah. you can just you can do it quick. There's a lot of versatility there. That's what yep. she said. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. 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 quick. Yeah. Every yeah. single yeah. thing he yeah. said. Yeah. Do, you, do you, like how how's the pump? <laughs> if, if you had to rate the pump for cable curls, what's on a scale of pumpness? What, it, what do you give it? Shit for me, juicy out of ten. So. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Breaks the scale. <laughs> okay. Go. Six or nine. Yeah. Dude. Nice. Nice. Plus I, one. No. Yeah. Yeah. Cable, yeah, uh, cables is like probably one of my favorites. Oh, so. that's so good. Yeah. Anyway, um, so 100 reps. Yeah. You got 100 reps, Trey. 100 reps, then a 50 rep rep progression. Fuck. That's Ooh. exactly regular, where I was gonna go. Regular, yeah. regular. Yeah, you got me. I like the regular curl and the hammer curl. I think that that has always been like an amazing fucking bicep finisher, in my opinion. That's what. But other like other too. than that though, w one more other one is I fucking love just like hundred rep, just straight bi like bicep curl, just the barbell, like just the barbell, like not having like you can't set it down though. You mean oh, like yeah, one yeah, like yeah. one set just Trey, fucking repping them yeah. out. We have the same exact one, literally. Yeah, I remember, remember the remember the opener with the hundred yeah. empty yep. bar. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember doing that. I remember doing that in explode. fucking high school and just that. Fucking wet. So I'm gonna go old school. Um, chin ups, okay. Ooh, uh, okay. Ooh. Serious bicep pump, and then on the preacher curl bar, and then taking the towel and, and fighting against the towel, having a person on yeah, the bottom. That's, that's old school. I love that yeah. shit. I could totally see you just sitting there, just kissing your biceps as you. Uh, go oh, yeah, I'm making love to him yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time. Oh, I'm inside the yeah. bicep. Yeah. When, 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 yeah. So we talk about like speaking to your biceps. What are some of the things you say? He's to trying your to be serious. Look at him. Well, I mean, you have to you have to give him confidence. Yeah, of course. Like, you're fucking yeah. beautiful. You're big. You know, yeah. you look fucking good you're today. Big. You gotta talk about it, right? Yeah. You're beautiful. Just reassure it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. See, and like, and you know, you know, it's crazy. Is, is that it's just not for a reason. Like your biceps hear that, and now the pump will start to get nastier. Dude, I had to tell him a couple months ago. You fuckers are in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, the fight master. Yeah, <laughs> like that's real. Yeah. You know? do, is there ever like a conversation where maybe they're you know they're not hitting the pump's not there? Do you ever like give them a talk? Yeah. Basically, you gotta rub them a little bit. You <laughs> know, you said, yeah. like wake up. Yeah, you, got, like, oh, yeah, you gotta sure. give them a ride. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Hot on guys, <laughs> like today's <laughs> yeah. yeah, like on Fridays, like today's yeah. the fucking day. Yeah. Where are you guys at? So, sometimes you gotta soft, you know, rub them. Sometimes yeah. you gotta smack the shit out. Of them. Like, hey, let's go, motherfucker. Like, oh, it's time yeah. to go. Oh yeah. 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 Don't that's, ever let anybody tell you. That's amazing. So all right, I'm gonna go. So my go-to is is. I think this might even take the cake for rep progression because rep progression has like a good pump to it, right? 
I'm going with the painful pump, and this is the throwback old MP Laron Landry workouts, the 28 method. 28, oh, I'm yeah. going 28 method barbell curls. Yeah. That shit. Straight or yeah. easy. We need I to bring it. those back. Yeah, sure. real, yeah. Which one? Straight or easy bar? <laughs> uh, sh- the I'm <sighs> probably straight. Yeah, the straight. So you gotta. You the forearm pump. There. The bicep. Dude, that shit is painful. Oh, yeah. In painful. high school, that was that's how I basically got to being not small. That was like one of the first exercises. That so I used to do reverse grip. 28 method. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's fucking yeah. wet. Yeah. Some of that. Yeah. I'll tear you up. So, I mean, literally, like, literally, there was probably that 28 method arm workout. We, me and, like, my bros probably did it 12 times, and we never once finished it because our pump was so fucking yeah. nasty. Yeah. That, that's a good one. I, that's old school th- that too. really I like helped that excel me because, you know, like, whenever I started out lifting, like, 14, I was still fitting into a medium T-shirt. That exponentially helped the process of me getting into a large T-shirt and then now into an XL. So, that's my go-to. Good no, stuff, yeah. No, All right. Well, that's that was the appropriate place to start, right? Yes, of course. All of right. Course. And then uh, kind of going in a different vein here. So kind of going shifting gears into like the more of the personal development stuff. So or around that area. So favorite book, podcast, audio book that people probably haven't heard about that you recommend. So mine will be I have two of them. They're kind of kind of together. A book called Who Not How and then a book called How the Best Get Better. And there was a, I'm in a coaching program and go to a different seminar um, every quarter. And part of that seminar had, you know, they give us books to read constantly. Mm-hmm. And How the Best Get Better was one that it blew my mind. It was so simple where it tells you how to manage your time. You know, growing up, you're structured throughout your whole life. If you have a nine to five job, you're structured. I don't have to be, I don't have a clock in, clock out job, right? Mm-hmm. So, I have a lot of flexibility in my time. And the one thing that I realize is I need structure in my life. I have to create it for myself now because no one else is creating it for me. But having time management, time set aside, day planned out, what you're going to do, you know, am I going to be super productive today? No, I'm smoking cigars. I'm talking to you guys, right? Today I know what it is. This afternoon I will be. I have a list of things I'm going to take care of this afternoon. Monday, I'm 12 hours of production. It's going to be laid out. So that book kind of opened up the platform to manage time better, and it, it was a game changer for me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then the who, not how, um, and I've talked about this a hundred times. It, it talks about it talks about Michael Jordan. He was the best basketball player in the league, but he didn't win championships until he had people around him. So it's not how can, how was Michael Jordan the best because he had people around him. He got Phil Jackson, Scottie Pippen, all the guys around him, and that excelled him to the next level. And that's how we are. I'm not the best. But I want to have everyone around me to help me excel to my next level and excel them. And, and that was huge. Not how can I do something, who can help me do it. Yeah. That I've, actually, I've actually read some of that book. It's, it's really good. good. It's really good. Yeah. 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 Really good. Who wants to go next? Anybody? I'll go next. This is a big old thick book. It looks like a dictionary, but well worth it. Uh, Principles by Ray Dalio. Mm. So it takes a while to get through it, and you might have to stop and reread the chapter that you just went through. But um, – to, to really understand what, what, what he means and, and how you can apply it to your life. But, I mean, there are so many things in there. It doesn't matter if you're going through something, you know, at home, family-wise, emotionally, financially, operationally, amongst a team with people that you're trying to, like like Jake said, be more cohesive to where you're, you're understanding that when you help others that it will be reciprocal and, um, and that sort of thing. But Principles by Ray Dalio take you a while, but well worth it. Trayvon? Um, I would say mine would be um, How to Change Your Mind by Michael Pollan, which is that book is, That book specifically, though, on how to change your mind is, has to deal with, like, psychedelic use. So it's, like, how to change how to like change your mental health using psychedelics, essentially. And so it's kind of like a case book study on he was taking, like, you know, whether it's, like, LSD or shrooms or something like that. And, like, you know, just going out there in the fucking wild discovering himself learning why why your mind goes in those certain directions when you're under the influence of those mm-hmm. things interesting what about you uh, cool one, mine is so actually so i'm thinking about this and i'm thinking about one that probably no one's read now you may have got an excerpt of this in like high school but it's actually an essay by ralph waldo emerson and it's called self-reliance 
I believe. I think I, I've heard of it. Yeah. But I so basically, it. he writes in this essay, and this is all about having confidence in yourself and identifying you, who you are. Like, what are the things that you believe in? What are the, the sort of things that, you know, you walk down the street and you identify that this is you, this is who I am, this is what I believe. And I think that's helped me a lot with the confidence of the fucking uh, WWE promos and stuff like that. Just fully buying into that, that essay really lays it out and it talks about, like, how, how there's so much power in that. Mm -hmm. So that's my recommendation. Okay. Well, I'm going to go kind of random on this one. Um, one of them is uh, called The Power of Myth. Uh, Joseph Campbell's the author. He kind of goes, like, super deep into, like, mythology and, like, the stories in mythology and going into, like, the meanings behind it and how you can apply it into, like, real life. So, like, it's kind of like, all about, like, the hero's journey, like, how you're, like, thrown into the fire and then how are you going to, like, emerge from that fire, like, as a new person? Yeah. So yeah. that one's really fucking deep. That one took me, like, a minute to, like, really l resonate. Um, and then another one is, um, let's see. So I'm kind of going, like, sci-fi here for a minute. Okay. Um, God damn it. Hold on. Someone talk for a second. got to remember the title. Uh, yeah, we'll fill the one, air, no problem. One, like, storybook that I've been reading, which, you know, it's, it's – uh, it's called The Old Man in the Sea. Have you ever heard of it? Mm. So it's basically just a, it's literally a, like a fictional story about this old man, just him out in the ocean fishing. And he just talks about all these life things that he wish he would have done, that he thinks about, like he can still do and all this stuff mm. like that. And he's trying, he's just trying to catch mm -hmm. the biggest fish in the world and he ends up catching it, but he can't, he can't reel it in. And it just talks about that entire like process. It, it's yeah. a good, it's a good self-reflection like thought mm. sort yeah. of book. Um, all right, so the the series, it's a five book series. He's writing the six book book right now. If you need to like a little like mental checkout, you want to go into like a fantasy world, or whatever. It's called Red Rising. Um, so it kind of like is this like society of like you have like the golds are at the top, the reds are at the bottom, and each class of people have their own specific jobs or whatever. And then it's pretty much all about like the the reds like basically up you know overthrowing the golds the whole time. Okay. So it's it's fucking brutal. That's the one you're telling me about, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. Um, I'm about to start listening on audio, but that one probably will become a series or a movie or something mm -hmm. like that for sure. So. Oh yeah. Sick. Yeah, another question. That's it, bro. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Too good. Who well, here? Here. I want to <laughs> since we're talking about books and stuff, and you can go into sci-fi. I want to know what's everyone's like favorite like superhero movie or creative movie like that, and why. Hmm. So, what's yours, Danny? Well, if I, I mean, I thought of Marvel instantly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I love Iron Man. The yeah. the first Iron Man, just because like Tony Stark, and I feel like that's like Robert Downey. In, yeah. in real life, D do you feel like you're Iron Man? Kind of, I mean, obviously, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, smart, hard, rich, hard sexy. AF, yeah, yeah. <laughs> smart, <Cool as> rich. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I think like I love his like sense of humor, so he doesn't take himself too seriously, but he's confident as shit. You know what yeah. I mean? Like in yeah. anything that he does, you know what I mean? So he just like radiates that. That's why I fuck For with sure. him. Sure, Tyler. I'm not terribly deep into the superhero stuff. No? Never was. I mean, even even as a kid, like I knew that it was cool Hater. and I knew what it was part mean? of culture. Hater. All right, well, well um, so I'll go generic. Though. Yeah, I yeah. Got, what, I got what's an like one you. character you got? Yeah, yeah, I got an answer for you. Probably Superman. I knew I your, I knew your I know basic ass was gonna say that. Well, I know it's generic. <laughs> I know it's generic. I know it's generic. I know I just basic love your ass, ass on his chest. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's funny though because I mean it, it's very. Um, it's 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 outrageous, right? He can yeah. he can lift up and hold the world the weight of the world when he's you know when it's yeah, and one stone and he's done for though. Right? Yeah, but <laughs> but I just thought it was funny to ask <laughs> the aspect though that he can do that, but then he goes right back to his his journalist job and, and he puts on a pair of glasses and combs his hair and, and no one understands that that's him. You know what I mean? It's like understanding how can you how can you do that in essence and blend and be in both mm. be in both spots. You know what I mean? You don't always yeah. have to be recognized yeah. and everyone falling over you. You know what I mean? No, absolutely. Do you also feel like you know, Incognito. you you also see yourself whenever he dresses up in the suit with the glasses and stuff like that. Is I that just think of CT Fletcher calling him Superman from Compton. Okay, you know okay. I mean? from Compton. Yeah, that's it. And he has a cat. Badass yes. Superman from Compton has a cat. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he said. I thought that was cool. Shout out CT. Anyway, um, Trayvon. So similar to Tyler's, I like I like Batman. I like mm. Bruce Wayne though for the same reasons mm -hmm. because he's like fucking multi billionaire right. and then he just goes back and just does like business yeah. and shit. Yeah, fuck yeah. That. But I would say my favorite movie though is kind of cliche, but I would say like the Batman Dark Knight. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah, fucking amazing. I mean, like, I don't think anybody can argue with that one. <laughs> no, absolutely. No, that's, a, that's a staple for sure. Yeah. So I'm Batman, Superman, both. 
Um, basically because well, small guns. Yeah, because of pipes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, I always like Spider Man. I really don't know uh, why. Spider Man's awesome. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if it's because it's like the underestimated person that you know was trying to save the world or do you know too much all the time, right? And always affected people around him. And then, you know, he excelled and he ended up doing everything that he sought out to do. And I don't know if I always kind of latched onto that. Um, but me and my daughter watch Spider Man all the time. She absolutely loves it. Loves yeah. it. That's and great. We, just, we probably watched that new one that just came out, I don't know, 100 times already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Was, that one's like, really good. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was good. I liked yeah. it. Oh, yeah. I would say, you know, I'm gonna have to go OG you know, along with like along with Batman. Now, I respect Bruce Wayne. I like the Batman. I actually, every paper in high school that I wrote, I used Batman because of just the character dynamic and all that Sweat. stuff. Huge inspiration. But I'm gonna go not Batman, but in the Batman universe, Bane. Bane's my biggest Get inspiration. Some, baby. It's not yeah. Dude <laughs> lived in darkness, <laughs> Traps. just fucking grinded, and then you know he had his. You know, revolution he was trying to happen. I respect that. The and League of Shadows. Yeah, he's fucking yoked. He's dark, and he's a, he's just straight up, like, on it. He's on he edge. and dark. So that's, like, my... Oh, I, biggest, I yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Most underrated Batman character, though, is Nightwing. Who? Nightwing. Nightwing okay. is, like, fucking badass. <laughs> yeah. So badass. Such <laughs> a badass superhero. Yeah. Also, uh, Peace... If, you guys need to watch Peacemaker on HBO. It's like he's like supposed to be a vi- like a villain, but he's not mm. a villain. It's kind of a weird dynamic, but it's John Cena, and mm. it's awesome. Gotcha. It's awesome. <laughs> so it's highly I recommend checking that out. <laughs> um, it's good. Yeah, I think this is good. All right, this has been the Roundtable Podcast uh, with co-hosts of the general, like the leader of the arms army, Small Arms Danny, special guest Tyler C. Lover, Trey Speed, and not small, Jake Pipe Memory, Master. Pipe Master, CEO of Laying Pipe, Roundtable Podcast. We are out. <laughs>